I learned that the ladies in the back are actually from Toy San. In Toy San, to say ho sick is ho heck. Ho heck. Ho heck. Okay. Come to okay. Welcome everybody to part five of our Chinatown Cheap Beats Hidden Gem series. And just when you thought you'd seen it all, we celebrate the reopening of our favorite restaurant, witness a fierce battle on Dollar Dumpling Corner, debate over Hong Kong cafes, chase an elusive chicken mushroom dish, attempt to crown a new roast meat king, and maybe we finally explain in depth on why we filmed this series. Once again, most of this food is under $8. So part five, New York, let's go. All right, everybody, before we continue with that video, we gotta let you know that we are partnering with yammybuy.com on a crazy big snackathon giveaway live stream on November 9th at 5 p.m. Pacific on their YouTube channel. If you guys know about yammybuy.com, it is the premier location to get Asian snacks and products, kitchen appliances online. We're doing crazy giveaways such as a year long's worth of snacks, giving away kitchen appliances, beauty products, and there's even instant discounts during the live stream. All you gotta do is get registered for an account at yammybuy.com to be eligible for these giveaways. Listen guys, in life, there's a lot of things that you cannot control, but you can control whether you are there for this live stream and winning things. November 9th, 5 p.m. Pacific on their YouTube channel. Peace. And we are standing in front of the legendary Bo Key. Yo, they came back after being closed for a few months during the pandemic. But let me tell you this, people were waiting for this spot to reopen. It's an incredible value, like per dollar ratio. People write articles about this spot. Bo, Bo Key on Bayard. Bayard. Let's go. Andrew, you got to let him know. You, you got to told me the classic yeah. one ton egg noodle that's wide. Mm, okay, so you got Yo Choi. Mm. Should I get yeah, should, yeah, He said get a vegetable, get a yeah. mustard green. They go out my yellow joint. Yeah, it's really okay. good here. It's mm. good here. Even the vegetables are good. Yeah. Andrew, you know what I love about the older generation? It's like, you're like, yo, what else should I get? And he's like, come on, man, stop it. You already <laughs> ordered enough. You ordered all the good stuff, but I just don't want you to order anymore. This is a cheap eat legend. Man, everything on this table is under $10. It's actually under $9, except mine is the half duck. That was 13, but you can get a quarter duck for $8. Gotta start with the duck. Country stewed duck. This is probably the most flavorful duck you can get in Chinatown almost. You know, the skin's not gonna be crispy, but it's gonna be flavorful. That is so good. Wow. I'm gonna take one more piece, that's it. Honestly, I would say the duck is a five out of five. That's how good the country stewed you duck is. You must get it. Andrew, I think you need to go with this pho with chicken broth. I'll probably go with the fish noodle then. Wow. This one, never seen this dish before actually. This meat looks incredible. The tendon is looking tender. A little lemon on top. That looks like the hall fun. You can't even tell the difference between the tendon and the noodle. Like I said, guys, they're basically taking like a gigantic fish cake and made noodle out of it. Yo, I think this is better than I expected. Man, that's really good. It's really light. I'm always excited when I get to try something new. And we are looking at a saute pork chop and pin noodle. So that goes on top of this. Man, sometimes when you order pork chop, they're not as flavorful and they're a little bit too dry. This is not any one of those, man. It is so good, super flavorful, very thin, but juicy still. The pin noodles, are more seen in Southeast Asian noodles. These definitely have a more organic look than other noodles. This is chow mein dry. Yeah, that's called the special combination because as you can look at the meat, it is the special meat. Now, David, there's a soup on the side over here that you can eat it with. The noodles are always super al dente, so they're not too soft. And I always said, I have the taste buds of an 80 year old Cantonese man. Andrew, I don't normally do it, but for you guys, I'm going in, I'm just kidney slice. You went in, I'm going in. In fact, I'm gonna do this liver piece too. I like liver more than kidney. That's my opinion. I agree with you, bro. Kidneys over livers, but I don't like either of them. Yo, I'm not gonna lie, I just had to wash it down with a piece of duck. All right, here we have the Cambodian Hu Teal. When Chijiao people went into Cambodia, their culture is mixed with the local cultures differently. So this is a more of a Cambodian style. That's what makes this restaurant so interesting. You cannot really box this food into any one type of cuisine. Here we have some appetizers. We have the legendary shrimp rolls. It's kind of like a thin tofu skin wrapped around some ground up shrimp balls. Sweet chili sauce on the side. They really look a lot like the Taiwanese chicken roll. All this stuff is under $10. 
very affordable. You could come here and have a feast, appreciate the culture for like under 50 bucks. I love everything here. I cannot do intestines. It's very hard for me, man. No, I'll cut you off. <laughs> yeah. I I, I'm eating mine. Nah. I'm beating you. You, you, more it, you, it. you take it. You take it, man. And last but not least, Andrew, we have our final round here at Boki. This is the Yao Choi. This is just a uh, mustard greens. That mixture between a little bit of oil, soy sauce, and I don't even know what else. Sesame oil, so good. This is the beef stew rice noodle. Give me the tendon, not the intestine. You can smell that kind of tomato paste in there. And this was obviously has some deep, somewhat Western French influence, guys. This one was a sleeper. This one is fire. You cannot miss with that combo. Beef, carrots, onion, lock it in. I've received a couple of messages. People are like, what, what, what is your guys' goal with the series? Or why do you how keep- many are, yeah, How many are you gonna do? Why do you keep doing these? Listen to this, guys. Number one, these places need business right now to just to survive and stay afloat. Number two, I wanna show the interactions with the older generations that I think it's important. Number three, this food is gonna go away. There's a chance that it's not really going to continue unless the kids and the younger generation take it over. The fourth reason is that all these dishes, they have this deep, complex, like domino ping pong history that I think is fascinating to lean into. Last but not least, the main reason is just because it's delicious, and I gotta eat lunch. Everything here at Bokey is fire. Cheap eats under $10. Get out of here. We're standing in front of a very, very little known spot that I've never been to before. It's called Fried Dumpling in English, but David, the Chinese name that you can read is Lao Shandong. These are Shandong dumplings, northern style dumplings in Chinatown. Hey, you're a Shandong man? I'm not a Shandong man. You're a Shandong man. This is a new one. You're a Shandong man. You're a Shandong man. 20 years. Coming in at 30 cents each you can get 17 dumplings for five dollars Andrew, let me tell you this i just had one in fact i actually had three i kept eating them and eating them i'm on like dumpling number five i don't even know why pork a tiny bit of chive a bunch of carbs soy sauce man that's a dollar dojang all right this dojang a little water <laughs> it's not bad it got the job done hey you know what this is, Andrew? This is some good gummer eats though. Dollar dumplings, dollar dojo. Bro, if you need to feed yourself 17 for $5, come to Fried Dumplings on Moscow Street. On to our next dollar dumpling spot is we're at Tasty Dumpling. They got cheap dumplings here. I'm five for 150, about 30 cents each. Need a lot of your tangent right Wow, uh, okay. I learned that the ladies in the back are actually from Toy San. And Toy San, to say ho sick is ho heck. Ho heck. Ho heck. I got these five. They're steaming hot. Okay, I would say you get more for your money. The style's more southern. These were cooked fresh. I would say quality-wise, I think these are a little bit better. All right, guys, David, this is the fresh shrimp one. These taste like your prototypical Chinatown dumpling. Way more chives. Pretty solid. This noodle dish right here, you have sliced cucumber. Not a dish you can normally get at just like cheap dumpling spots. Sesame, Sesame noodles. noodles. Mahjong is a very Beijing Tianjin thing to use. That's Mahjong Mian for real. Chili oil with this would be fire though. So you guys let us know which one you like better, tasty dumpling or fried dumpling, but you gotta check out both. David, our next segment of this Cheap Eats Part 5 is gonna be our Hong Kong cafe battle between the top three mid-end HK cafes, which are Gong Sik Tong, Cha Chan Tang, and Cafe HK. We got three heavy hitters, Andrew. KST is sort of the new kid on the block. Cha Chan Tang has been around for like, what, eight, nine, 10 years? And I wanna say cafe HK H cafe has probably been, you know, it's probably also just a restaurant at this point. You have bolo yao, like bolo bao yeah. with butter. Oh, it sold out? Damn, they sold out of the bolo bao. Yo mo bolo bao? No. No bolo bao. No bolo bao. Porsche? No. Stop. Oh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let's go in. That's the baked onion pork chop from Chan Chan Tang. Little uh, onions falling off there, buddy. Onion pork chop, very solid. The reason I could see people buying that over the baked pork chop with tomato sauce is because this lets the pork chop shine. All right, this is the curry fish balls, David. This looks very HK. Really Overall solid. solid. You guys, listen, Cha Chan Tang. Not mad at it. Listen, they specialize in Cha Chan Tang food at the Cha Chan Tang. David, what is the beauty between Bolo Yao where you just have like a piece of butter or you know, the spread butter on here and toasted? That's it. It's beautiful in its simplicity. Yo, I'll tell you this, this is hitting all your sensories. It's sweet, crunchy, crispy, buttery. Can't beat that. I might have to dip that in the curry. Wow. Mm. Not bad. I suggest you do it. Last but not least, I have the Porsche, aka the La Song Tong. This one's like a really savory tomato soup. The free one has a little bit of meat, a little bit of pork. This one is chunky. Look at I, that. I, I think it's fair to say, Andrew, that the Porsche you get for free comes from a different pot. You're not getting this for free. Look at these pieces of meat. Guys, that was Cha Chan Tang, aka CCT. This is the Hong Kong French toast 
with peanut butter inside. All right, this was good. That was good. You have the light top from both spots. Here in my left hand, I have Cha Tang. Here, I have KST. You know, guys, it's not always a competition, but you're making me choose between one or the other. I'm going with this one. We're going in to KST's baked pork chop over rice with tomato sauce. It's the fusion between Western and Eastern flavors. It's a new take on it, yo. There's like barely any tomato flavor. Super sweet. Sweet. Almost tastes like a sweet sauce, like a sweet and sour sauce. All right, we're here with Ken. Ken, you a local? Yep, local. All right, guys, yeah. trying the churn mm. fun from KST. We can. What's your analysis? Solid. Churn fun? I always prefer the churn fun you say is more silky, the one that you get from food carts. This is a traditional HK style. I know, yeah. I like the flavors, the hoisin sauce. It's just me. This is Ken signing off. Signing off. The flavor profiles at KST are pretty significantly different from Tatante. We have our last and final competitor, Andrew, HK Cafe. They have a crazy looking pork chop rice right here. Yo, this looks very colorful, man. Let's dive into it. It's fried Everybody kind of does it different because, for example, at KST it was grilled pork chop. This yeah. is fried pork chop with tomato sauce. It ain't bad. It's not tomato sauce. It's a sweet and sour sauce, bro. There's tomatoes in there. You know why I know there's tomatoes in here? Really? This one and this one were very, very different, but the same dish, guys. Think about it. All right, David, coming up next, we have the gale yudon. This is the curry fish balls from CHK, Cafe HK. Honestly, Andrew, I was looking at this from afar. I had no idea what this was. I thought Yo, this was the pork guy. More flavor because of the onions. You get one more bite, guys, just because this is different. I'm going to crown the winner. Still the classic Ta Tan Tang. Okay. I kind of agree. Try all three spots, Ta Tan Tang, KST, HK Cafe and decide for yourself. We're trying to go to the Bayer Meat Market. Dude, I saw the chicken and mushroom and I knew that that was gonna be one of the best yeah. cheap beef. But they sold out today. We're going across here to Ye Wong. David, this spot has been recommended by multiple insiders from the area. They are not even serving any other dishes other than their roast meats. It is looking super crispy. And so is a cha shu. Apparently the best roast meats in Chinatown. Let's check it out. <laughs> Okay. Gumja, okay. There were certain ones you couldn't really get in the combo, so I had to get a whole half of the uh, peapod duck, and I had to get a half tea smoke duck. So you know they kind of got me on the ducks. How much is a just a, like one sambal box? Nine dollars. Okay, guys. So it's nine dollars for one sambal box. Now nine dollars you would say is a little bit more expensive than other spots. But let me tell you this, I can tell you this right now, the quality is here. Immediately, we have to start with the premium meats. We're talking about the stewed duck, a five spice sauce. Not a lot of spots carry this. Guys, I'm so excited for this. I'm dipping it in the Owens juice. Got some of that five spice, slightly sweet. Almost like a cinnamon. Yeah. It's a premium meat. Wow. And we're moving on to our second premium item, the peapa duck. Yeah, there we go. Look at this. Mmm. Huh? That's good. Okay. I might have to go one more piece, bro. One more. Look at wow. that. Look how beautiful that is. That skin, so dark and crispy right there. Duck it in, bro. This chashu is looking good. All right, really super fatty, super moist. As we can see, a little bit more authentic, more the brown, oranges color yes. versus the red color. Yes, that's what I need. That's good. That's good. Shout out to all these spots. Let's go into the soy sauce chicken. Wow. Everything's hitting four out of five right now, in my opinion. The gurung chung is crazy too. That chicken was good. Pork spare ribs. I don't really like spare ribs that much. It's never the thing that I go for. That's good though, man. Got a little bit more spice than usual. This is a uh, gurung chung gai. Ginger scallion chicken. Like I said, everything is hitting four to 4.5 out of five. So this is the regular roast duck. This is a lot of people's favorite. Yeah. That was pretty good too. All right, Andrew, last but not least, roast pork. I think the whole presentation and the moisture and the juiciness of all the meats is very high level. Man, this has great, I like how the skin's still on. Sometimes, you know, when they chop the seal yolk, it all falls off. I cannot say necessarily either one of these items was the best one I've ever had, of course, but actually all of them were very, very solid. And that's why I'm saying Yue Wong for the consistency. You guys let us know in the comments down below if you got some different opinion, but man, in my opinion, Yue yeah, Wong. Our next spot is an absolute staple of Chinatown, Andrew. Of course, we're talking about Chinatown Ice Cream Factory. When it comes to Asian flavored ice cream, this is the best. We are talking about exotic flavors. Let's get in there. Do you recommend any toppings with the uh, pumpkin pie? I don't really like the pumpkin pie. Okay, okay. <laughs> right, that's, fair, that's fair. You know what? Let me get the Teddy Grahams. So I got the Teddy Grahams on the pumpkin pie. Obviously, I'm trying to mimic and replicate a pumpkin pie crust. First off, I had to start off with something seasonal, the pumpkin pie with the Teddy Grahams. I'm trying the ginger one with coconut shreds. I've never Yo. had ginger ice cream before. Straight up, it tastes like pumpkin pie. I've never tasted something so creamy and something so gingery at the same time. They are able to imitate the flavors 
incredibly accurately here at Chinatown Ice Cream Factory. You know, pumpkin pie, that's not a traditional Chinese flavor, but that is good. All right, I got banana. I just had to try banana because oftentimes banana tastes very artificial in kind of candy or ice cream form, so I'm interested. I have almond cookie right here. That is the classic Cantonese almond cookie. Pretty dry, goes really well in ice cream due to the dryness. A lot of mm. almond extract. This banana ice cream one's really soft. Pretty good. All right, Andrew, so this matcha cookie is really interesting because the original flavor that we're trying to replicate was not matcha, but matcha cookies. And by the way, guys, this ice cream will not go to waste. Durian ice cream, man, I know Chinatown Ice Cream Factory, they do it the best. Whoa. Ugh. Funky, creamy. I really like this a lot. I'm being dead serious right now. This durian ice cream is better than the durian ice cream I had in Malaysia. And last but not least, Andrew, you have the pandan, the pandan. Pandan, you know what it is, guys. It's Very the, difficult uh, to describe. It's, a, it's like a creamy vanilla coconut flavor. Look at that color, it looks beautiful. You know what's crazy? I could smell that ice cream before I ate it. Everything tasted so different. Check out Chinatown Ice Cream Factory here on Bayard and try some flavors that you've never had. Second day in a row, Andrew. We missed the drop. Bro, we struck out. We're trying to get the steamed chicken and mushroom dish. Next, we have some items from the nice dessert shop in Chinatown. Mango mango desserts. This is a mango Millie crepe. This stuff looked beautiful out of the box. All right, man. I'm going in on the mango Millie crepe. Wow, and I'm gonna get some real mango in there too. Honestly, flavor-wise, it was almost even closer to the old school Kanto HK wedding cakes. Yeah, I know what you mean. I was not expecting a Millie crepe to taste like the light whipped cream cakes. Here we have the durian pancakes. Mixture between a crepe and a cream puff. Really no, good. no, that was real durian. Durian pancake pillow, that's what I call it. I would say, listen, if you're looking for some really cute desserts in Chinatown, check out Mango Mango. While we were waiting for some food, I bought this for 350. I don't even know what the English name is. It just says different cup, different flavor. This is something that you can usually only get at the fair. Pretty good, it's cooked well though. <laughs> this spot behind us, Pink Lady Cheese Tarts. Now, they are serving Japanese cheese tarts. These are not based off of Cantonese Don Tots necessarily. They are more like almost a cheesecake filling, but I don't want to kill them cheesecake either. We got to try it. Uh, this is your shop? Yes. Very cool. Can I get one of each cheese tart? Do you want any toppings on your purple rice? Do you recommend any? Can I get purple rice on my purple rice? You want to add more? Yeah. I'm getting purple rice on my purple rice. I'm going with matcha. Of course. This is the one. This is the one that caught my eye. That's the original Philly <laughs> cheese. The original cheese, pretty good. Uh, it does kind of taste like a light, sweeter, creamier version of a cheesecake. Well, you keep eating it, so I, I don't know. I mean, I'm assuming it's decent. I like it. Next up, I've got the blueberry, and you've got the chocolate. The cheese tart filling, super, super soft and airy and fluffy, but then the crust here can crack on you, so it's very crispy. So you're going to try the purple rice? I'm gonna try the purple yam, the ube. You are looking at a purple rice smoothie topped with purple rice. I've got Whoa. the purple rice. He's got ube cheesecakes. That's a purple vice. Oh, my favorite one. Ube flavored things. I'm on it. That's my flow. Leave me alone. I'm gonna go. Yo ma, um, fuck you guys, fine. They sold out again. I'm too late third day. While filming this series, we bumped into so many people on the street who were actually following our food crawl. And it's great because these videos are not just a guide to food, but a guide to people. And we're so touched to see the impact it's had on business owners who tell us that the first time they got featured in a YouTube video, they were smiling and laughing, giving their best performance. And we can be honest, sometimes Chinese culture seems inaccessible and introverted, so much to the point where a lot of people just disengage. But we continue to do our part to be a piece of that bridge that will bring the connection back. So with that said, be on the lookout for part six. Thank you so much. Thank I appreciate you. that. Thank you for thank, having, you. thank you for watching. Thanks. Yeah, thanks thank for the you. support. Love your videos. Oh, thank you. Fun yesterday. Oh, that's what's up. What'd she say? She said I was eating churn fun oh. yesterday. Um, see, people are doing the crawl right now.